everyone, Matt Brennan here from Beyond Grappling. Uh, for the members at my judo club, I thought I'd put together all my YouTube videos to help people get their yellow belt. So this goes through all the throws, arm bars, strangles, turnovers, and stuff and that you need to know for your yellow belt. It is also a bit of a time travel through my YouTube videos. There's some really old videos on here because I've been posting videos, I think, since 2008. So um, a pretty long time. So um, the content's still good, even though some of the videos are pretty old quality. But uh, jump on, enjoy yourself. If you want to learn um, uh, all the Gokyo in, in better quality videos, I encourage you to head to learnthegokyo.com and I've got all the throws, armbar strangles, turnovers you need to know from white belt right through to black belt. So um, enjoy, have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Hi guys, so today uh, Tillon and I are going to go through the basics of Osotogari. So the major outer reaping throw, it's a very basic throw um, that every beginner gets taught, but I'm just going to go through it in a lot of detail so you know exactly what you're doing when you're at the training and you're at the club and you're learning Osotogari and the coach might not be able to come over and, and, and help you out. It would be a really good refresher of all the different principles and things you need to do in order to complete the throw. So it's, let's just start with gripping, okay? So when you're at the club and you're gripping your opponent, it's important that you're both on the same page, okay? So what I recommend doing is when your instructor's teaching, you've got to look at how he's teaching. Is he teaching from a right-handed grip or from a left-handed grip? Is, is, is uh, him and his opponent standing right on right or is it left on right? And things like that. So you've really got to know that before you can even implement the technique. So the first things first is a basic osotogari. What we're going to look at is gripping our opponent's collarbone and we're going to be gripping the back of his elbow. And Till and my partner will be doing the same thing. Okay? What I want to do is, is my partner's going to start square. And I'm actually going to start off center to my opponent. So I'm going to be starting here. I'm not going to be starting in front of him because it's quite hard to come out and around to, to throw him with osotogari. The whole principle of osotogari is what I'm looking at doing is pulling my opponent up and off balance and onto one foot. And I'm locked on with body contact. Once all his weight's on this one foot, if I can sweep that leg, obviously he's gonna be thrown for rip on or for a score. That's the whole idea of Osotogari. What I'm looking at doing is when I step forward, I'm stepping around about a foot away from my opponent's foot and my foot is pointing the exact opposite way that his foot's pointing. That means that when my follow leg comes through, my hips are pointing the opposite way my opponents are. My foot is pointing out this way, my sweep is gonna be coming in an awkward direction and I'm not gonna get the full force of the technique. So I wanna make sure that when I step forward that I pull my opponent off balance and my hips and foot are pointing the exact same way my opponent's uh, foot's going, the opposite way, okay? So as I step forward with my arms, my left hand wants to pull my pinky up and I want to make sure I lock my opponent to my body. And I pull him, and I know my opponent's off balance because his other foot comes up in the air a little bit. If I can do this, my opponent's not off balance. I must be getting pull, pull, getting him up and off balance. With my right hand, with my right hand, it's gonna pull here. Okay, I can loosen up the gear a little bit. I'm gonna pull there. So there's, all, there's no space between me and my opponent. I'm locking my opponent to my body and then I'm rotating. So as I step forward, my left hand is going to come up and my right hand is going to come up here as well. Okay? Once I step forward, pull. The next part is everyone, you know, the seesaw. I want to keep my head up and back straight and my head up and my foot forward. My toes pointed and actually turns a little bit. So when I step forward, step and pull, when the hips come through, my foot turns slightly. Notice there's, I've got contact here, there's contact all the way through my chest and the toes pointed. And now when I bring my leg back, I'm gonna hit him just at the back of the calf with my calf, the meat of my calf, 
and then I'm going to bring my head down and my legs going to come up into the air. That's the whole idea. A lot of people lean the way they're trying to throw and the happy is they do this and they've lost the, the power in the, in the seesaw of the body. I want to have the head up and my head comes down once I go through the follow-up movement. Okay, so with Osotagari, I'm gripping one hand on the collarbone or top grip. One hand at the back of the elbow, I'm stepping forward. Stepping forward, pulling my opponent off balance at the same time. And it's really important to practice that. Practice that. Very important. Without Kazushi, you're not going to throw. Once he's off balance, bring this leg through and finish the technique. And I'll do some throws now so you'll be able to see. So, pull. Pull, bring that leg through. Leg through. You notice you should be able to hear my foot hitting the mat. And that's what we're after. Step forward. Pull. Leg through and throw. I make sure I put pressure on my opponent here. I'm supporting. My leg goes up and my head goes down. That's Oso de Gary. So I'll do it again. Slightly different angle. Stepping forward, pulling across. Two, three, start getting the leg in there, leg in there, and then throw. It's also important when you finish to stay in a position like this. If you can get good in this position, you're going to have very good judo, very good glutes and legs. A lot of people throw and then roll away, or throw and go straight like this. But you're not going to lose. So often in judo, when you're with your opponent, it's when you're stuck in this position. If you can get good at these positions and balance them, and that you'll, you'll go a long way. So with your Osotagari, make sure when you're doing it that you're pulling off balance sideways, okay? I'm, 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 as I step forward, I'm pulling up and off balance, up and off balance. I'm not pulling down. I'm not pulling my opponent down. Up and off balance, body contact, chest to chest. My right shoulder is hitting Tillon's right shoulder. Okay, we're here. There. My foot's coming through, the toe's not up, it's pointed down. There's body contact all the way through our bodies. This arm's pulling, I then sweep, head down, leg up, and we're in a good position. Now, as a partner of O Sotagari, it's important that you be a good partner in judo. If you're not a good partner, no one wants to train with you. And it's hard to get the rhythm of judo. So you notice that when I throw Tillin, as a partner, he gets a grip. Thank you. You're never going to fight someone in, in judo that doesn't get a grip. They're going to have a grip. So the first thing Tillin does is he gets a grip. Second of all, he relaxes his arms. He's, not, he's letting me come in and, not, and practice the technique. He's not stiff arming me. He's also getting his feet at a nice distance apart. And when I come in, he's helping me out a little bit by bringing that other foot in the air and off balancing himself just a little bit. As a bad partner, or a bad partner, sometimes they bring their feet together. And what happens is you find you might sweep and cork the back of their other leg. And that's going to hurt them a lot. And you feel bad because you've done something wrong. But really, he should have his feet a bit more separated and nice. You also notice that when I come in for the technique, Tillon doesn't lean forward on me. So he, he leans nicely. He's keeping his body weight in a good position. A lot of people are going to lean forward and you're like, oh, it's not working. Why isn't this throw working? And my opponent is leaning backwards in an awkward position for me. So as a partner, when someone's doing this technique on you, it's important to stay square, stay nice, and let them do the technique. Okay? Last thing when I throw. A lot of people, when you go to throw the Rosotagari, as I come in, they start turning their body this way and stepping off the technique and, they, and it doesn't quite work out. So as a partner, you have to become comfortable with getting thrown with those Sodagari and break falling. Don't turn off and, and make it awkward for your opponent. So when I come, they step off, step off, and it doesn't work. And, and then what ends up happening is this. They step off and I and kind of, it doesn't quite work out and there's something going wrong. So as a partner, you must um, just be a really nice partner. Be stand there, get a grip, talk about, think about the principles of what you're doing, and, um, and that'll really help your Osotagari.
Thanks for watching. Hey guys, so Tai Toshi, one of the hardest techniques I think to do a judo. Um, and uh, yeah, so here's people have been asking me, can you do a super breakdown of it? So I thought I'd do a super breakdown of it and we'll talk about it. So when we do a Tai Toshi, a lot of people teach, you know, if, if Tillin has, this is the base of the triangle, I put my foot at the apex or the point and then I pivot on this, snapping the arm, but I backstep over here and I stick my leg across and I'm throwing with Tai Toshi. A few things people do wrong already. They put all their weight in this leg. Now, how am I meant to throw someone over there if all my weight's on here? Imagine, like when you push a car, when you, you know, when it's broken down, you're, you're pushing towards the direction. You're leaning and you're pushing the direction you're throwing, and all your weight is going that direction. But if I put all the weight in this back leg, he's just jumping for me every time in training. Look at that loaded. But watch. See how he moves that direction? That's what we need to get into the habit of. It's, I mean, we're not driving sideways, but we're driving over this direction over here. So that's what I want you to get into the habit of. So to get in the habit of that, when you're doing move which uh, tie push statically, you can put the foot at the top of the triangle, but what I want you to get out of the habit of is pivoting out, outside his legs. Because now it's a bit of a stretch to get your leg across. Now for me, I'm short. If you're taller than me, you can put your foot out here and you can still reach over there. That makes sense. But because I'm small, if I was here, there's no way I could get to there without, um, I wouldn't throw it. So what I need to do, because I'm small, I step, I cross step a little bit further. See how I'm not at the top of the triangle? I'm kind of here. Where I do my Haragoshi, where I do my Chimata, where I do, uh, do my Sinagi. You getting the gist of it? So many people teach you put your Haragoshi here, your Uchibata here, your Tai, and then your Sinagi here, your Moro Sinagi here, and your Sode here, and your Koshi Jurumi here. But Tai Toshi, oh, we do that here. Doesn't really make sense, does it? We should really be putting it the same spot we do all the others. So when you're doing your, your Tai Toshi, you're stepping quite across, the same as your Uchimata, the same as your Sinagi, right? Arms, and for now when I back step, I don't step out here. Now there's a stretch for me. I step quite close. And now, it's a really nice position for my Tai Toshi. So does that make sense? I think so, and that's how, that's how once I started changing this mindset of, of this, it makes, it, I, I started throwing people with Tai Toshi. But for ages, I was missing the leg. Every time I'd go for Tai Toshi, he'd just move that way a little bit, and I'd miss it. Yes, I could do a double stab, yes, I could do other thing, but I wanted the direct attack, or, you know what I mean, a good setup of a Tai Toshi, and it would work. But yeah, because I was standing at the top of the triangle and I was coming out here, he only has to move, you know, half a foot and he's already outside my legs, you know? Yes, if I was taller, I could maybe get it. But once I started stepping here, back stepping here, now when he moves, look, move, 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 okay, I still get it. Because now I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm taking a head start of him, but before I was starting in the same, he moves this way and I miss it. Now I'm starting, pretty much almost in front of him. You know what I mean? I'm here, and I know he's gonna move that way, and as he does, I'm gonna already be ahead of him to trip him over. So that's really important. Actually have a think about it, go to training, ask your partner when you come in, do the traditional way, top it, and get him to move that way a little bit. You miss it. But when you cross step here, and he moves, you get it every time. And that's what you need to be doing in your in, in your in your rendering and, and your competition and your just your technical and your teach it as well. Next aspect is the right is the leg, whether it's right or left. If my leg yes, I say, if my leg is on Tillens, he can't go over. Because I'm actually wedging him in place. So when you walk around the house at home, if there was something 
let's just say there's a brick on the ground there, and you're walking along, if, you, if your foot hits the brick mid-step, you're going to fall. But if you went to start walking and the brick was already against your foot, you'd feel it. And actually, it doesn't let you get the momentum to fall. It might sometimes, but not very often. And you'll go, oh, you'll move it. But if you caught it mid-step, that's when you're going to trip. It's the same with Taitoshi. I don't want to be wedging him in place. Plus, I'll hurt his knee, yanking on it, like pushing it, hyperextending it. I need to be bringing this foot out a little bit, dragging him onto the leg and then tripping him over, over the leg as he goes over. Makes sense, doesn't it? So, you know, make sure that body weight's going the direction we're going. You know, make sure, make sure we're not on this leg. Make sure we're getting it even or that direction. Second of all, the first step, you want to make, make sure that it's not top of the triangle, it's over here a little bit. You back step, come out this direction and you'll catch his leg every time. Third, foot, don't wedge it against here because your wedge means on the spot. Make it come out a little bit. Next aspect is your tai toshi. Some people teach it like this. Now I've had like five knee ops, so I don't really want anyone to be falling on my knee here because it can't bend. And a lot of people have hurt their knees doing tai toshis. But Neil Adams, you know, I think he's a two-time world champion, second Olympic twice, everyone knows who he is. He does his tai toshi like this. And he's awesome, he's a specialist at it, so you know, if, if you're more than happy to do the way he teaches, I mean, he's a world champ. But I like to teach it with his toe up a little bit, so if Tillon ever drops that knee in, I can at least, you know, for me, I don't want to hurt my knee, I've had it, my knees are weak, I'd rather have that bend, you know, so I always bend that knee, and then when I'm pulling him over, I spring him with that leg. So let's have a look at that. Just go there a little bit. So we're here, as I come in, see how it's sprung? Again, here, as, it, as I pull him over, it kind of helps with this springer. You know, it just adds to the technique of the, of the rotation. So another aspect people do wrong with the Taitoshi is, is that aspect. Next aspect is this right hand. All right, so many people bring it across because they do Morosi and Agis and, and, they, and they like to bring this across. But if you bring that across, it, there's too much body contact and you'll find it's just a bit too much and what will end up happening is, you know, it'll be turned into more of a, a modern day siyatoshi, um, which is not bad if they go over for rip on. But what I like to do is I relax this hand. You must relax it. If you muscle it, you won't be able to close the distance. So if I, if I really use it, I can't get really close. But if I relax it, relax it. And if you do a lot of bench press and shoulders, make sure you're stretching those front delts and chest because you need to be able to close the distance by just pulling it in. All right, so pulling it in. And I try to get my arm in his armpit here. So if you've got a grip. Yeah, I try to get in that in the armpit there, you know? And see now I'm controlling the shoulder. And then when I come under, I'm controlling the other shoulder with obviously the sleeve. And I'll there's a little bit of space. It's actually one of the only one of the only throws I can think of right now where there's a little bit of space between you. Uh, in terms of, you know, Osolo we're locked on. Para we're locked on. Uchimata we're locked on. Koshi Gruma we're locked on. Sienagi we're locked on. But with this one, there's actually, you know, there's a little bit of space there. See? So it's one of the only ones I can think of at the moment where there's a bit of space. Now, see, this is in there. My, my foot's bent. This arm's up. And what I try to do with this left hand as well, some people pull it down, you can feel the difference, eh? Hey? You can feel the difference. If I pull it here, he's not, see, he doesn't go over. He's going now. So we must get that hand out as far as we can. So again, we're here. And I'm pulling it out as far as I can. And at the end, it whips through. This arm whips out as well to finish the Tai Toshi. So, lastly, people do wrong. That left leg straight. That left leg straight, you're going to get no power. You can't, you can't get lower than him. You must bend your knees, okay, guys? That's, you know, in judo, you can never pull the sleeve enough, the hikite, and you can never bend your knees enough. So, there are, two, there are heaps of stuff you can work on next time you go and do Tai Toshi. Oh, and the last one you can work on is your setup when you're doing moving or in competition or when you're doing rendero, sorry. Uh, if he stands square, if he's standing square, I'm not trying to throw Tillin from here to there in forwards. I'm trying to throw him diagonally. So what I like to do if he's right foot forward, when I do my type, when I do it in Randori, I make him step over this leg. So when we're walking, so I'll do another one. When we're walking, there's my Taitoshi. 
And now look, I only have to do a one step to entry. All right. Okay, I go. Now, after he puts that foot down, not before. If I do it beforehand, he'll pull back on it. Ready? See how he's got that foot to step and he pulls back. I've got to wait after that foot steps. Where can he go? He can't go anywhere. And then I step across one tight touch. So what I'll do a throw this time. So he steps, steps. Over he goes to the Taitoshi. And that principle, once you grasp that principle of um, pulling him after they step, your judo is going to get better and better. If you just keep pulling now, they're going to resist it. If you pull now, I've got nowhere to go but to go over that leg. And that's why when I'm fighting Tillin, if I'm, if I'm putting all my weight on this leg and he grabs an arm or it pulls, I'm gone. When you're fighting, this is just a side note from the Taitoshi, you shouldn't be having all that weight in the front leg because all he has to pull me, I can't move that leg. You're going to have your weight a little bit more in the back leg. So when he pulls me, pull me out, I can stop him a little bit. And then that's when the game begins. So I really hope that helps you Taitoshi guys. Uh, had fun making the video, thanks Tillin. And uh, make sure you sign up to the University of Judo guys. I'll be a personal judo coach for a fraction of the cost that you know my clients pay one-on-one. -on -one. And um, you know it's gonna be an awesome fun. So make sure you check out universityofjudo.com. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure you post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks heaps. Ibonsinagi is a good throw, and I'm just really going to get in depth with it because it's a throw that if you can understand the principles of what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve, you can really get good at it really quickly and start throwing a stack of people. So, with Ibonsinagi, we're going to start with a, a basic um, lapel and sleeve grip like that we've been talking about. Okay, and my opponent's going to be standing square. Okay, so they're, they're square. Now, what I'm looking at doing is I must break my opponent's balance. So to do that, I step forward and lift this up. I don't worry about pulling with this arm. I find that if I pull with this arm, I've got to do this and then this, and it's too hard. So I open with this left hand, and I step forward, around about a foot away from his foot, and I'm going to pivot on it. So I'm on this toe, pivoting on this foot, and this arm's lifting up quite high. And the reason why you lift it up and over-exaggerate is because I need to fit my body in this gap. This is where I need to go. Here. Up and over. So I'll show again. So if I see Nagi, what I want to start with? Stepping. Stepping. You know when your opponent's off balance when they're coming up on their toes. Or when their toes turn white. That's when you know that your opponent's um, off balance. Okay, so I step forward and pull. Step forward and pull. And get this rhythm. After a while, the next day you re-delt your muscles in your back of your shoulder should be sore from, from pulling your opponent off balance. Pull forward. Now this first step is so important. It's your level changer. You've always heard your, your coach or sensei say, bend your knees, bend your knees, bend your knees. And you find that sometimes you come in for throws and then you bend your knees. Well, it's it's too long. You should be bending your knee. This first step is the leveler. It determines how low your entire technique's gonna be. This one. So if I come in with this leg straight, my whole technique's, I, I'm not, it's not gonna work. I need to come in low. So to come in low, I'm already bending that knee. That's my level decider, you could call it. Okay, so open and I'm bending. He's off balance, he's up on his toes. From here, I want to get my elbow into his armpit as I pivot, okay? Now with my feet, you notice that my head's up and back straight. I'm not here. And you also notice that this hand is back a bit. It's not in front of me, it's quite loose on the back of his bicep here. I want to get it back 
This is pulling down, that's pulling up. One. This is entering as the back step comes in. See how it's back a little bit? It's not here, it's not next to me, it's behind me. My knees are bent and my back straight. And my feet are in between his feet. One. You notice where that first foot is? It's not all the way out here. It's not all the way in your center line, it's about there. And I'm giving a bit of room to move. If I come too close, I can't pull him off balance. One, I'm on the ball of the foot. Two, I've pivoted, my head's up. I'm facing the same way my opponent is. This is pulling down, this is pushing up. Knees are bent in a good position, okay? I'm not getting knock kneed. Some people, some Japanese like to be pointing a little bit that way. I'm, I sometimes try to do this, but I really would rather just be forward. There. When I lift, I then throw and I try to bring my right hand down past my left knee. That's actually where I want to be. Pulling up and off balance. Pivoting in. And I turn and rotate in that direction with this shoulder. Again, to it. You notice that when I'm coming in, I'm not coming so close to knock my opponent on balance. I'm going to get thrown here. I need to give room to move. I need to give him room to be off balance. Without room to be off balance, he's going nowhere. Step one, and you can practice this for all your throws, but for Sinagi in particular, pivot, bending and then pulling up to support my opponent to finish the technique. Let's do one more. Your feet have to be in between his feet your opponent, they can't be here. They can't be here. It's a Siyatoshi and a bad one at that. It must be in here. Like you're at the gym doing squats, head up, back straight, feet are there. Head up, back straight, your bum back. It's exactly the same with Ippon Siyanagi. Pulling, pulling, one. Pivoting. The knees are already bent. This is, this is pushing up. This is pulling down. Bending the knees. Rotating up and over. So guys, that's the first module of Ippon Siyanagi. It's important to remember, back of the elbow, pulling up extremely high, making sure he's on his toes each and every time. Okay, and it'll take some time to get used to. Second of all, this must, the first foot, I must be pivoting on it, on the ball of my foot, it must be bent. This hand that comes through, it's not in front of me, it's behind, like I'm gonna hit a tennis racket. And I'm about to hit it with a, tennis, a ball with a tennis racket. It's back a bit. That tightens it up and he can feel it. Here it's a bit loose. There it's quite tight. This is pulling down across my body. Rotate this way. This is pulling down across my body. This is pushing up. The knees are bent, head up, back straight. Both my feet are in between his feet. They're not out wide. They're in between. I bend the knees and rotate up and over. So guys, there's the basics of hip on Sienagi. Marate Sinagi is exactly the same. We're just going to grip from a lot lower on the lapel to, in order to get my elbow underneath. So Marate Sinagi, you're grabbing quite low on the lapel. Not high because you can't fit your elbow in. Quite low and everything is exactly the same. Push this through and you've got the throw. And if you want to do another variation, you can do an Eri Sinagi, which is you get a one-sided grip and everything is exactly the same. One, elbow goes in, and finish the technique. So there's three techniques. All the principles are the same. Breaking up the balance, pulling him up and off balance, and things like that. So uh, really working your scene, Nagi. Remember, that first step is the leveler. It determines how low you're gonna get with your scene, Nagi. And that's really important. Hey guys, the next technique we're going to have a look at is Ogoshi. Alright, the major hip throw. Uh, it's a basic, but it is a really good technique. Has all the fundamental, fundamental principles needed uh, to understand all judo throws. So, what we're going to look at doing, I'll just do a throw first so you know what throw I'm talking about. So, Ogoshi, okay, arm around the waist, and we're going to jump in and throw my opponent over my hips, okay? Now, let's look at it in a bit more detail. I want to make sure. I'm grabbing the back of my opponent's elbow. 
okay? What's gonna happen is with my free arm, it's gonna go around underneath my opponent's arm and around his waist. You can grab the belt if you want, I just like to hug my opponent with my arm, okay? Now, with my feet, the feet are the, the main key for this throw, breaking off the balance and the entry with the feet, all right? So what I'm looking at doing is I'll start with a grip on the, on the collarbone, back of the elbow. As I step forward, I'm gonna pull my opponent forward, so if you just stand side on, you can notice he's coming up onto his toes. That's very important, that means that Steve is off balance, okay? One. So as I step forward, I'm lifting up with this hand, pinky to the sky, and I'm tugging with the right hand here. Okay, and I step forward. There, okay? After that, my right hand lets go. It goes around his waist at the same time that I turn and pivot on my front foot and throw him over. So we'll go this way. Okay, so I step forward and pull and make sure I'm getting my opponent up onto his toes. The right hand goes around the waist. Now here's the hard part. I've got to pivot on this front, on this right foot, on the ball of my foot. I've got to turn and face the same way that Steve is facing. Both my feet are also in between Steve's feet and my knees are bent and my back is straight. I'm not like this with my legs because I've got no power. Okay, and I'm not one foot in or the opposite foot in like this. I'm in a good position. I'm also not bent over like this. So let's go around this way. So again, one. I'm not bent like this. Try and lift him up because I, I can maybe get it, maybe. What I need to do is pivot on the front foot and get knees bent, back straight, lift with my legs, and then turn my opponent over. One more time. Step forward and pull. Step forward and pull. Arm goes around, pivoting on this front foot, and I make sure my knees are bent um, when I come in. If I stay straight and then bend, it's gonna to be too slow. I wanna come in with my knees already bent. And the best way to do that is to jump in. So one, and then over. You notice when I'm landing, I'm bending my knees. Um, I, I'm not standing up like this. I'm bending and I'm controlling, keeping it nice and tight for a transition a bit later on. Again, get this one, see? Okay. okay, collar, back of the elbow. Step forward and pull. Okay, pivot at the same time this goes under the hook. Here. And over. So guys, there's the, another throw, Ogoshi. It usually works best in competition when your opponent, because no one's going to let you walk around with an underhook around their waist. If I walk around with Steve with like this, he knows what I'm going to do. He knows I'm going to do an Ogoshi because my hand's here. So you've got to try to time it. And the best place to do an Ogoshi is when your opponent comes for overhand there. Again, as he goes for it, I'm in. Underneath that arm. Okay, so one more time over here, and as it comes, I'm underneath. And now I'm in a good position for the Ogoshi. Alright, so um, there's Ogoshi. Make sure your knees are bent, back straight. Hey guys, so uh, Liam and I are going to be showing you how to do ukigoshi. So ukigoshi is floating hip throw, all right, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. Uh, I learned this a few years ago uh, because I got taught, and maybe like you did, that uh, ukigoshi is one hip and ogoshi is two hips, all right, but that's not entirely accurate on how it is. Ogoshi, when I come in, I grab here, I lift, and I lift him up in the air, okay, and then I throw. Ukigoshi is Jigoro Kano's favorite technique. And uh, if you, actually I might attach to the video below this how Jigo County does, does it. So on YouTube I'll just uh, attach that video. But uh, Ukigoshi, sleeve grip, okay? What you're gonna do is reach. You're gonna come near your partner about here and you reach and you grab your hand on the hip as not halfway down the back on the hip. And when I do that, my shoulder goes in Liam's armpit, here. All right, and when I do that, I have to reach, and when I reach, I get a bend in my body. And ukigoshi is I pull and bow. Watch. 
That's ukigoshi. You notice the mechanic is way different from ogoshi. Ogoshi, I come in and lift. Lift. Ukigoshi, I grab, I pull behind me and bow. And there's a big difference when I do ogoshi. Ogoshi, I throw Liam over there. Ukigoshi, I throw Liam over here. So it's like a 90 degree technique rather than a 180 degree. I'm not throwing him that way, I'm throwing him this way. Okay, so again, let's look at it from behind. And what do I pull this way? See the legs? They pendulum out. Again, watch his legs, I come in. Over. And that is how you do Uki Goshi. O Goshi, his arm uh, is lifting up. Boom. Uki Goshi is a this action. And that's the difference between Uki Goshi and O Goshi. And for more, just check out uh, uh, learnthedogokyo.com. So this time, finally, he knows if his head dips a little bit that a Sinagi is on its way. So I find Liam, I pose, he goes here, and he keeps his head up real stiff. So now if I try to kind of break his posture to get under, it's gonna be a lot harder. But when people stiffen up, it means a Koshi Garuma is easier. Because he's now stiff, if I move this part of the wood, the other piece, like if he's a big stiff board, if I move this part, the other part moves. Okay, so, I, so if I'm here and he's kind of really stiff, and I'm trying to drag his foot and I keep your head up, yeah, so I'm trying to break it, it's not working. Arm around the head. I said you want to take the, you know that crown at the back of your head? I want to just be, keep it up strong. I want to be pulling that. Okay, so as we're here, and I'm pulling, and I remember I'm still blocking that post. Okay, I want to be pulling. Arm around that crown, hips across, and see that stiff. When he's stiff, he goes over a lot easier for Koshi Guruma. Again, we're here. And I'm pushing, you know, and I'm trying to work, maybe I'm trying to work this distance up so well around the head. And so the fulcrum becomes almost the, not the neck, but you can feel it, hey? When I pull it, it's a lot stiffer. So this is another option for you um, to work the Koshi Guruma. Hey guys, so we're going to do a bit of a moving old chigari, alright? The reason I like to do a moving is because if I can get Matt moving in a circle, his leg, alright, is already travelling in that direction, alright? And that's half the movement done for me, okay? So the goal with old chigari is to make Matt do the splits, okay? So what I'm going to do, alright, I'm going to get my collarbone grip and back of the elbow. My left foot is going to step next to him like I'm going for a sotagari, so here, alright? next to him. Instead of pivoting and then using my arms, because that's all my arm strength, all right? And Matt's whole body is a lot stronger than my arms. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to lock my arms down, all right? And use my whole body pivot to drag Matt, okay? Because that's a lot stronger, all right? So I'm going to step, body pivot. But notice how I leave this leg in between Matt's, all right? I'm leaving that there so as his leg moves around, I can catch it. Okay, while putting pressure on this collarbone side and looking in the direction that I want to throw. Alright, so I'm here, I step, pivot, catch. Okay, make sure, alright, you've got a couple of options when you catch. This wrist can come down to apply pressure on Matt's right side or the key, the key can come up and over the shoulder. Alright, so what we're going to do, step, alright, pivot, leave that foot. As that foot's still coming around, we're going to catch, chin over his opposite shoulder, looking in the direction you want to throw. Alright? So here, I want to catch it while it's still in the air. Alright? So step, pull around, catch, and drive into the ground. Alright? So the reason I like doing this moving is because it makes the leg a lot lighter. Alright? And I'm catching it as Matt's committing his weight onto that leg. Alright? So I want him to commit so that when I take it out, he continues to go down. Alright? So last time. Alright, we're going to step. Alright, pivot, leave that leg. Alright? And with my legs, 
I'm making a semicircle motion and I'm hitting my calf to his calf, alright? Making sure to keep that toe dragging along the ground. Hey guys, Matt DeGrena here from LearnTheGokio.com, UniversityOfGiro.com, BeyondGrappling.com. Today I'm here with my friend Liam. I'm going to show you the differences between Sasada Tsurukamiyashi and Hizaguruma. And this is what I like to teach people in my classes. So Sasada Tsurukamiyashi is propping, drawing ankle throw, or lifting, drawing ankle throw. Pretty much, your partner, we're going to start yeah, right on right, or Ayotsu, okay, which is right on right. And what's going to happen is I'm going to block Liam's foot lifting up over that leg. And I like to teach that Sasada Surikomiyashi is a forwards technical throw, as in, in a straight line judo. Okay? I'm going this way, I lift and pull. So if we do it a little bit moving, we might go this way. As Liam's walking forward, as he steps, I lift and pull. And that is how I do Sasada Surikomiyashi. And with the arms, I lift and pull. And as it goes over, I'm going to pull with my arms and pull. And get this action going on. So when we're here, as we're walking, I lift and pull. Turn over. Might do that one, one more time. Uh, so we're here, and I might even just do steps like this. As I block, I lift and pull. Lifting pull, south side of Surikami, Ashi. And here's a Garuma, I like to teach his knee wheel, but I like to teach it going in a circle, okay? So south side of Surikami, Ashi is propping drawing ankle throw in a straight line. Here's a Garuma, it's when we're moving in a circle. So, what I like to do is I circle this way, but I've got to get my partner coming forward on this leg. So I don't move, I move, but as I move, I drag him with me. See how I get this action going on. As I move, I get Kazushi with my arms. I go sideways with my arms, okay? And I might just go here. As I go sideways, I block the knee, and over he goes. So you see the mechanic is two different things. The first one was lifting, lifting and blocking and pulling. Okay, the other one, I'm going sideways with the arms, getting movement, I might go here, getting movement, blocking, and I'm going sideways with the arms. One's going this way, one's going this way. And that's the difference between Hizaguruma and Sasada Tsurikomiyashi. Okay, so we're going to have a, a very quick look at uh, Sase, uh, Sase Surikomiyashi. It's a very nice technique, one of my favourites. So if I've got Matt here, the important thing to remember is not to confuse Sase Surikomiyashi and his Aguruma. Okay, the majority of his Agurumas that I see, or I should say Sase's that I see, are actually his Agurumas. So what happens is the player steps out, they get the long pull, the foot comes forward, and then they block and they push away. Now by doing that, they're actually wheeling their opponent, which is, here's a groomer. Very nice technique, but definitely not a sase. So sase is really for when that foot's strong forward. So in this case, if I'm fighting Matt, now Matt's right-handed, and you can see by our opposing group, I'll need to actually attack this. So it could be that I sweep with the ashi, or I could stab him with my Owachigari, at which point, I'm then going to pull the sleeve up, and with this hand, I'm not going to push. I'm actually going to pull forward. It's a lift pull action. So I've got the foot forward, step in, my hips come forward, both hands go up, and I block. So from here, I'm going to stab in, and then I'm going to step a little bit further again, and throw my hips in throw with Sase. So this is the, the more difficult side. So for this version, I'm stabbing in, then taking a slight sliding step because I want to drive my hips, which is going to allow me to pull up, and then 
came through. And what you'll see is I come up and I keep coming forward and I wheel my hands over. Okay? I don't ever push with this collar hand. I pull, pull, pull and pull through. If I push away, I'll change it. Now, just as a, a quick one, I might just uh, quickly move around to the other side. Now, I've said I had that first attack where I was able to, to go on the sleeve side. Now, this is something that people are much more familiar with, which is Sudasase Surakumiyashi. So, in this instance, I'm hacking Matt's foots forward. Now, this works particularly when Matt starts to lock down and try and move out to the outside. So as he does that, with this side, I step in with his action. And this hand goes up and behind. So if it was hisa, I'm happy to go right down low behind the back. But with Serta Sase, I find it works better if I turn my hand and I use this to lift. The left hand, the collar hand, is simply going to pull. So I'm going to step around and throw. Nice control to finish. Again. One more time, we're fighting, in this case we're opposite. Really doesn't matter as long as I'm going to throw with this. So Matt's going to lock down, he's going to try and step to the outside. So what I do, as soon as he locks down and starts to step, I step out, drive the arm up, and throw. And then I secure. One more time. So from here, Kata Gatami or a head and arm triangle. Um, so pretty much Kata Gatami, alright, I can work on these submissions and my partner knows all them and then they're not going to work international competition. But if I ever get the arm out, usually what your partner does is I might try to push it in the face. What I want is to get this arm across, across the body and gable grip my hands and pull. But I can't finish from here. I need to come up onto this knee and my body goes like this with my legs, that's my good base pushing into his head. I need to get underneath his elbow and once I get underneath it, I come up under his neck and I squeeze as tight as I can to finish the choke or the, the hold down. Okay, so I'm here. I might be trying something. He pushes me. Push it across. Boom. Gable grip up. I might need to come back a little bit and up and squeeze. Now if we're doing it no gi, take that off. Uh -huh. Alright, there's nothing, there's less space to do stuff, there's more space. So as I push it across, I might have to push this knee, I might have to come to my elbow, that might come onto the back of my head, here, and squeeze, or to here, on his own head, or onto his elbow, and squeeze, and it hurts a lot. So the main thing I need to worry about is getting underneath and up. Because it stretches his neck and whole body out. Here, here, and body pushing. So finish the cardio timing. Hi guys, today I'm just going to go through the basics of uh, Kezia timing. Because uh, I find that a lot of clubs, um, they just kind of skim through groundwork and, and they don't necessarily go into, into great detail with how to hold someone down. So I'm just going to start off with Kezigatami or Scarf Hold. Okay, so Scarf Hold is pretty much, I'm in this position here. Okay, have my hand, this arm underneath my opponent's head, grasping the gi. My other arm, I've got my opponent's elbow and my armpit is catching his hand. Okay, my feet, my right foot's going to be here as a, as a base to stop my opponent bridging this direction and my foot is back there, not too far back where he can entangle my leg and get a half guard. Okay, and my head is down. That's a good Kezigatami. Also my weight, I'm not getting my weight directly on top of my opponent's sternum. That's the strongest part of his body, okay? So we don't want to be laying on the strongest part of our opponent's body. We want to be laying on the weakest, which is kind of like in the side of the ribs. 
okay, which is in the side here. So I want my strongest parts on his weakest part, okay? So I'm here, and it's, it should be quite uncomfortable for your opponent. Now, a couple of common things that people do wrong, the first one they do is have this foot like this, okay? And, and one problem with that is you tend, if your foot's up, you tend to start pushing this direction. And that's bad for two reasons. One, I've got my base is stuck here. So if I push this direction, he can trap my arm with his head and bridge it rolling. And I'm gone. Okay? And second of all, I'm now pushing him that direction. And I don't want to be pushing him anywhere. I want to be holding him down. Okay? So I'll make sure... The first one is, don't get this foot up. Okay? The second one is keep it down. Okay? Another, mis another thing a lot of people do is they really crank their opponent's head up and really pull. It is uncomfortable for your opponent, but they're not going to submit and they're not, it, it's just no use, okay? Because if I start pulling my opponent's head back, one, he can cut me in the face and bring his leg over my head and push away. And he can escape that way, okay? So if I put heaps sort of pressure here, he's going he's gonna to push with his leg and I'm gone, okay? So he might do that. Another thing people do is they put their head too far forward. And if my head too far forward, my body weight's going a little bit too far forward, and it's just going to help him bridge and maybe escape his arm for, to take my back, I say. So if my head's too far, he might bridge this way, and now he may escape that arm out the back. Okay, so it's really important that your feet are in a good spread, okay? They're in good position, they're not here, they're not here. Because if this foot, this foot is stopping him bridging this way, go, stopping. If my foot's here, now bridge. I used to use my hand, which means I've let go of this arm, which means he now takes my back. He can spin underneath and take my back and escape the hold down. So, again, I'm in this position, okay? My legs are evenly spread. If this leg's too far back, he's going to half guard my leg and, and get away. So one thing I like to do when I hold people down in Kazugatami to help me remember these cues is I try to bring this hand, instead of grasping the gi, I grasp my own leg. Okay, that just helps me remember to keep my foot in a forward position where there's a good base. It also keeps his head off the ground to stop him bridging. So he's lost a lot of power. And lastly now I can hold on to this. I make sure that I don't lean too far back, but if my opponent she tries to sit up at me, I put my head down. Okay? To, to, to counterbalance, counterbalance what he's doing. If he tries to bridge this direction, well, I lean back a little bit. He leans forward again, and go back down. Okay? So there's a constant going back and forwards. And it's all about feeling your opponent and what he's doing, rather than just going <coughs> and letting your opponent bridge and roll you wherever you like. You have to be wary of where your opponent's moving in order to hold him down so you can adjust if need be. So uh, yeah guys, there's just the basics of Kazugatami. I really hope you've picked up some tips on, uh, on how to you know, stop your opponent. Uh, you know, just how to hold him down. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, today I'm just going to go through the basics of Tade Shirigatami or mount um, of you know how to hold him down and where to put your body to stop them getting out. Okay, so Tade Shirigatami, his leg is going to be up, both legs. Okay, I want to have my feet, you've got two options with your feet. Okay, you can either have them up quite close to his bum, my knees squeezing together, but what I like to do when I'm in mount or Tade Shirigatami is grapevine his legs and then drive my hips into him. Okay, and I don't try to get out. I've got good bases here, and I'm in a good position. I'm driving my hips. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Very uncomfortable. Okay? I've got really good bases here that stop him from bridging and rolling me out. Okay? One problem a lot of people do is they start underhooking your head, which is fine, but if my opponent's bigger and stronger than me, I don't have a base that way. So he's going to pull his head to the mat, bridge and roll, and he escapes the hold down. Okay, so I want to make sure that my base is up, that I'm low on my opponent, I great find these legs and I drive my hips into him. Okay? I don't need to extend because now he'll bring his arms in here and start working other stuff. Okay? All I want to do is hold my opponent. I don't care about submissions, I just want to keep him down. Alright? Control, hold down first and submission second.
okay? So when I'm in mount, I stay low, my knees squeezing together, and I try to grapevine these legs. Once I'm here, I drive my hips down, and I keep these bases here, okay? I try not to keep my base too close to his head, because Ori can now put his arm behind his head, head behind your own head, this one. That's it, here, and now I don't have a base, he can bridge and roll. So I make sure when I land, I stay low. I've got my bases wide, I've got my hips driving in. It's a very good position, okay? The, the, when people lose Tadashi Katami, it's because they kind of get ahead of themselves and they want a submission. And uh, uh, a favorite submission I like to do from there is the cuff choke, okay? Which is, I'm here, I go under my opponent's head, grab my own gi and come across his neck. The problem with doing that, if I do it this side, is I've now lost my base, which means he's gonna bridge and roll me. I don't have a base to stop me. Even with his legs grapevined, if we're the same way, and he's strong, he'll probably get away, all right? If you wanna grapevine these legs, stay low, keep the base wide, and I smother my opponent. Put your gear in their face, make him really work. And lastly from here, you listen to his breathing, okay? When he breathes out, and before he breathes in, that's when you drive your hips in to really Make it really hard for him to breathe so he, he can't get out. So there's just some basics of, of what I like to do in Tadashi Gitani. Um, that you know, that some things you can look for. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. Another basic hold down we're looking at today is Yoko Shiro Gitani. Uh, and it's similar to Muni Gitani, but we're going to be controlling his legs as well. So a Muni Gitani, we're here, we're under the arm, and we're, and we're under the head, and we're here. With a Yoko Shu Gitani, we're going to go under a leg, gripping the belt, okay? And we're going under here, gripping the gi, pulling tight, my hips are low, and I'm in a good position. I can go down on my stomach, or you can come up onto your, up onto your knees, whatever you prefer. And this chin is on his chest, and I'm pulling very, very tight. Okay? Now, usually from here, if my opponent tries to turn away from me, I'm on this shoulder here, on his left shoulder, stopping him turning to, away from me, okay? But Steve has this shoulder free, so if he turns towards me, he's got a lot more, he's got a lot more um, movement, okay? So what I need to do with my left legs, with my legs, this way, okay, is with his legs, I'm using my toes to push back into my opponent. Okay? Because I know he's going to try to turn into me. Last thing my opponent can do to escape is push my head and try all his legs and, and choke me out. So he pushes my face, brings that left, and now I'm in some problems if he, if he triangle chokes that. So it's important with Yoko Shio, sometimes you might land here, and it is a hard hold down. If you've got a guy that's good on the ground, bail on that, I think, and, and get to a side control. But if you do keep it, you can grab his belt, the skirt of the gi, grab whatever, and just hold it for 25 seconds, squeezing here, keeping it tight, keeping your knee into the hip, my left knee is into his hip there, chin down, and really just control this position into the, uh, until, um, until the referee says hip on, or he escapes, hopefully not. In all judo hold downs, first the hold down you land with the hold down, is the hold down you keep. Try not to fumble too much. Don't land in this position and then go, oh, and then change. Just whatever you get, you get. So at the moment I've got his, the skirt of his gi, I'm gonna keep that. If I land and grab his pants, I've got that. If I get the, the pant leg or the belt, I'm gonna keep that. All right, but it's very important that you, um, that you just hold the position you have. Controlling the head, controlling the knee, controlling that leg and pulling him in towards you. All right, that's, and chin down. And that's Yoko Shigatami. Hi guys, today Mohan and I are going to show you three really cool loop chokes you can do in Ewaza. So the first one we have is the Kanto Strangle. What's going to happen is, my, I'm going to grab my right hand on his lapel. As I do this, I'm going to push 
He's near. Leg comes up over the head. Going to come over the head, under that leg, straighten my leg to finish the submission. So one more time, the Kanto strangle. Right hand on his left lapel. Okay, I make sure I kick his knee out as I pull his head down. I'm going to make sure I loop that neck. Right leg over his head. If I can't get underneath that arm, don't worry about it. Just crank it from there. So this loop choke is really, really useful when your partner's trying to pass your guard by grabbing both your legs. So when he grabs both my legs, his neck is free. He can't defend it. So what I'm going to do is I reach high up in this lapel. With my right hand, I'm going to hit his head down. As his head comes down, I make sure my left elbow goes high. And then I finish the submission from there. To make this one a bit more useful, because if I do it like this, he's just going to roll over his shoulder and escape the submission. So what I do is I throw my left leg over his shoulder. So he's trying to pass I quickly inside lapel, smack his head down. As this, I get this action going on. As his head comes down, my left leg goes over his shoulder to finish the loop choke. And the last loop choke we have uh, in Nerwaza is when your partner's in turtle. What we're going to do, lasso his neck, step over, sit your leg through there to finish the submission. Now with this one, it's pretty fancy. It's quite hard to pull off. What you're going to do is lasso the neck. Now from here, you step the head and do kind of, you can kind of pull up on here, but it's a lot harder to finish. So what you try to do is step your leg through the gap underneath this arm. Now I'm just going to sit back, straighten my leg, pull up on this right arm to finish the submission. Hey guys, so today uh, Sensei Justin's going to show us uh, some basics of how to choke uh, people out with the subtleties in the wrists and that sort of stuff. So, because um, we've been covering that lately in training and a lot of people just muscle it really, really hard and they can't tap people out. But if you just use the subtleties in the wrists and understand how chokes work, it makes your uh, shimawaja a lot easier. So. So we'll look at the three basic chokes initially. So the most basic ones are Nami Juji Jimmy, which is a, a natural cross choke, uh, Kata Juji Jimmy, okay, and Gyaku Juji Jimmy. So, so from a mounted position, so in this case, starting with Nami Juji Jimmy. Now Nami Juji Jimmy is both thumbs in, okay. So what I'm going to do is insert the one hand, and what I want is my knuckles in line with Matt's ear. I take the second hand, once again knuckles in line with Matt's ear. Now I don't push away, All right. what I'm going to do is simply pull my hands away. So I use my wrists. So what you see a lot of players do is they get this nice hold and then they pick the guy up off the mat and they're like, oh he's not strangling and their arms are all the way crossed and that's not going to go out. But if I simply employ my wrists, I'll get a tap instantly. Right so all of that is, is from here, where I've got the grip, I do that. That little action is all it takes to actually get a, a good strangle. So second technique we'll do will be Karajuchi Jimmy. So in this case, I get that same ear depth grip, thumb in, on one hand. The other hand, I go underneath my own arm, and I grab nice and shallow. Okay. With this one, the biggest mistake people make is trying to cross both their hands high. But the beauty of this technique is the second hand's quite low. So I'm here, he might not even know I'm going for the choke. I'll insert my hand very low, slide it up till it's level with my elbow, and then I just hold the gi with the bottom hand. It doesn't really do much, it pulls down along the chest, not up, not across, just straight down along the chest. And the other hand does that same action with the wrist. So I'm thumb in, I'm here. It's a single-sided choke, okay? Not double-sided, which is what most people try to make it into. Okay, 
The third of these, done from the, the top position, from uh, Tadashio, the mounted position, is Gyaku. So Gyaku, the fingers are in. But I must insert much more deeply. So instead of knuckles in line with the ear, it's actually the first knuckle of my thumb that's in line with the ear. And the same thing, I'm going to actually pull my hands away from each other. And straight away that choke will come on. It's a very strong choke and very effective. Most people try to rotate their wrists either one way or the other, and it does nothing. As soon as you try and pull your fingers away from each other, the choke will come on strong. So we'll just have a look at those three from guard. I'm in the guard here, and I want my Nami Juchi Jimmy. So what I'm going to do, I really don't want to leave his arms across here. So preferably, I'll try and drive one arm across, then I'll take it here. Usually, as soon as I come to here, he'll start to correct. So as he does, he gives me the choke. And then what I do is I, my hands, you can see my knuckles are in line with Matt's ears, pull away and the choke's on. So I make him do the work. So I put the first arm in, I push him across. So it takes a fair bit of effort sometimes, but that's the first movement. Now I don't try to hold him there. He, there's a hundred different things we do on the ground that he's gonna know about from here. So I let him turn back towards me, and he actually inserts the second hand for me. And that point, strangles on. Now, uh, cut a Juchi Jimmy, slightly different. So this time, once again, I reach up and I grab that collar with both hands and I pull down. Now once I do that, what I like to do is trap this arm, so I actually cut down on the elbow and I come nice and low, and then I pull down to my hips and then I do that little wrist action. Okay, this one's quite nice as well. If you, he's postured up, sit up, get that first hand, use two hands to bring him down, and then low with that second one, lock that hand on your hip. By locking that hand down, he's actually gonna do the low collar side of the choke for me. As he tries to rise, the strangle comes on quite strongly. Okay. Now, the Gyaku, I actually prefer doing with butterflies. Okay. So, I'll actually I sit up, I take my hand down behind, and I'll pull him in. That gets the nice first one in deep. He'll usually try and sit back. I rock forward with him. Now my second hand's in. And now what I'm going to do, I don't pull with my arms. I lock them in place. I sit back, I bridge him up, and I strangle. So, once again, I'm sitting, I've got my butterfly hooks in. I reach up, I bring my head close to his. I reach behind, temporarily break his posture, get a nice deep grip, four fingers in. And then, as he comes back away from me, I use that to insert on the other side. Now you can see we're both sitting at a, a reasonably equal sort of distance. Now I just rock backwards. And the strangle goes on. So as I rock backwards, once again, hands come away from each other. But that's it, nice and simple. Hi guys, today I'm just going to go through a variation to the clock choke, okay? So the clock choke is, your opponent's just gone for a drop C in Agi. What you do is you're going to feed the gi, just going to head up, into the opposite hand, okay? And when my opponent drops, okay, I'm going to bring my hip through, run in a circle. So it costs you jimmy or the clock choke because you run in a circle. Now, sometimes what happens is, as you get this hand across the neck, your opponent will belly out, so go on his face, okay? And it can be quite hard to, um, to kind of, it's just not tight enough, okay? Or maybe you want to step over here, but you're giving away too much space um, to grab the leg and work a choke. So another variation you can do that you may have not seen before, 
which will freak out your opponent pretty much. You only ever tap them or hold them down with stuff they don't know most of the time. Okay? Unless you're really, really good at something where they know it's coming and they can't stop it. Uh, but you don't really want to rely on that. You want to rely on something that they just don't know. Um, so I've got that opposite lapel. What I'm going to do with my left foot is I'm going to step over his head here. Kind of like a suicide choke, but not quite. And now from here, I can roll this direction, okay? Because I've still got the lapel. I roll, and I catch this hand. Just come around here, Sam. See how I rolled? Now I go under this arm, I can hold it, and put the choke on. Again. So you can stay there. Now you, uh, Sam, stay there. So, here's your turtle. Okay, I got the turtle fishing. He might have just done a drop Sinagi, okay? So, he's done a Sinagi and he's fallen to the ground. Just as I'm about to go for the clock choke, he bellies out. Okay, I, I'm a low. Now from here, just come back around here. Step, roll, catch this arm. And just come around here. And see I have this choke around his neck and my shin. I can put this hand behind his head because it hurts his shoulder. But really, I just want to kick this so it doesn't roll away that direction, and I put the choke on. If I don't have this arm, Christian will keep rolling, and he'll get out. Okay, so it's really important to trap that, to trap that shoulder. So one more time, he went for a scenario, he drops it down. I may do it from here, but it's a lot harder. Probably won't get it. He's more stable when he's on turtle. Go ahead, uh, and then, if he goes scenario, he bellies out. He's less stable. Okay, I stay low. Remember, I'm mauling my opponent when they're on the ground. Step. Roll. Catch the arm. And finish. So guys, there's a, um, just a, a variation to the clock choke uh, from Turtle when they belly out and you can't really get underneath them. Thanks for watching. Now I'm just going to look at some basic, um, some really basic chokes when you have your opponent's back. These are not competition variants, but they're the principles behind the competition variants we'll show later on. So you need to understand the basics in order to understand, you know, the other techniques. So we're just going to look at um, a very basic, my opponent's just in front of me, it's just a rear naked choke. So pretty much what a rear naked choke is, I'm looking at crushing my opponent's uh, Throat, voice box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around with my hand, my palm facing downwards. Okay. My other hand's going to come behind, and I'm going to gable grip, or just hold my hands. And with the sharp part of my forearm right against my opponent's voice box, I'm going to pull it back, and I pull up, and I bring my right shoulder up against the back of his neck, and I get the submission. So again, I come around, grabbing. I pull back and I pull up and I use my shoulder to push his head forward and I get the submission. Now you may have seen the sun rear naked chokes where you're doing it like this. In judo you're not allowed to put pressure on the back of the head. So a rear naked choke like this would be a penalty. Which is strange, but they're the rules. So a rear naked choke you can do it like this. You can do it like this. Okay? But you can't go like that. Hi guys, today Mohan and I are going to show you five armbar submissions you can do from guard. So, if you're fighting from here and your partner's got their hands on the ground, what you're going to do is grab his wrist with a false grip or a normal grip, it doesn't matter. Sit up, over his shoulder, reaching up and over, grabbing your own wrist. Now from here you're going to lock his elbow to your body, blocking his hips so he can't roll. And now from here, instead of using your arms to crank the armbar, which is fine, but if he's as strong as you, you kind of, kind of hold it off you're going to hip out so he falls beneath you to finish the submission. The next submission we have is when he accidentally puts his hand on my pants, he's looking to pass. 
that makes sure his elbow's in the air. So it's a bad idea from his point of view. I'm gonna reach up through the gap here, cupping the back of his elbow. Now from here, I hip out, hand, foot on the hips, knees together to finish the submission. The next submission we have is when he has both his hands on my gi. I'm gonna do a jujigi timing. So what I do, I lift my hips, get my arm underneath, grabbing his uh, elbow there. Foot on the hip, as I push my head to this angle, I'm gonna get an angle. This left leg goes halfway up his back, I'm gonna step the head, finish the jujigi timing from here. So once again, we're gonna come underneath, on the elbow, foot on the hip, leg halfway up the back as I push the angle, step the head, finish the submission. The last submission we have is when both his hands are on the mat. What I'm gonna do is push a knee out. So my foot's on his hip, I've got one knee out. Now from here with my right leg, I'm gonna throw my right leg all the way over there, holding this wrist. Now from here I sit up, to finish, I flutter. Once again, his hands are on the mat, push a knee out. Okay, now I throw my right leg by holding his wrist, I throw my right leg over there. But I have to make sure I escape this leg as well, or the submission won't work. Throw the right leg. Now from here, left leg must come out. Hand on the belt, pull in to sit up, and from here, you finish the submission. Last one we have is when his hands are on the mat here, for some, for some reason that it's there. I'm gonna sit up, overhook an arm, grab his opposite lapel, sit out, and finish the arm bar here. So uh, jump on your back for me. So for my second deg degree back belt, I did this. Or second or third, I went like this. I went, um, I think I started from Kazura, Kazugatami, and I went Amba. So I think I just went like Udigatami, I think it's Hizugatami, Udigarami, Udigatami, Udigatami on, on this arm, and then I went, uh, yeah, Udigatami here, Udigarami, Udigatami, Jujigatami. That's what I did for my secondary, and the pattern went, oh, see, that was good. Like, I went through every armbar, practically every armbar, in a series, and they're called lock flows. And then the other one I did for this time was from guard, and I went, Actually, did I start here? I oh, don't know, I think I went. Jujigatami. Udigarami. Here's the Gatami. Udigatami. Udigarami. Jujigatami. So Jujigatami, the sit-back entry, is a very basic entry, but it'll help you understand the mechanics of the technique. So what I'm gonna do is, I step over with my, with my leg and I get that hook in. My left arm comes underneath, and I grab my own lapel. And then usually, more often than not, he's grabbing his own gi, so it's, and I can't just pull it up. Then what I do is I step over, I sit back, keeping my knees really tight, and now I can finish getting the arm out to finish the jiu jitsu time. One more time, nice and low on my partner, keeping your weight on them all the time. Step over, but I see I'm sitting on him, I'm not standing up. I'm sitting down, I reach down, grab that gi, and I grab my own gi. You don't have to grab your own gi, it can take a little bit extra time, but I like to. Then, I step over the head, sit back, and from here I squeeze my knees really tight together, and then from here I pull back on the arm, keeping it close to my chest, <clears throat> Lift the hips, pull his arm up. So pull his wrist down, lift my hips, squeezing the knees together to finish the Juji Atami. Guys, where are you? Hurry up, move it or lose it. Uh, go turtle for us, uh, stomach. So we're gonna do the, uh, the Matsumoto turnover. Um, 
if I can remember. I think I got it. Uh, Matsumoto, she Olympic champion 2012. She's now runs an ice cream truck. That's pretty cool. Um, so what we're going to do is he's going to be actually can you go up from turtle to turtle for a sec? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a a grip around. Oh, sorry, this way. So I'm going to go one arm past his ear and the other arm under the armpit here like this. Okay, like I'm going to do a Peruvian necktie, if you know that. So I'm going to be in this position, but he's going to be on his tummy. So one arm under the armpit and one arm on, around the ear like this, like that. Um, and it's pretty easy to get because it's not too deep either side. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Kezuki Tami legs. Okay, like this. Who cut me? Who cut me? <laughs> Liam Treadgold. Anyway, me. It was probably myself, let's be honest. Nah. So, what we're going to do is I get this grip, I go Kezuki Tami legs, and I walk around, I go face down, and here. And get out of it, Jack. Alright. He chokes himself, <laughs> I can hear his gurgles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and she... Is a sleeve grip or a No, just a normal, oh, okay. just to like a proof, like, yeah, right. like a seatbelt. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, um, and she turns over, Heaps of people with this. So, over, under, seatbelt, kind of. And then I'm just gonna walk around. The key is, don't put your left foot forward, it's your right foot. And I go right, left, right, and belly down. Here. And you got it. And the other one she does, uh, is if they go turtle, she'll do this similar, she'll just chuck her leg, she'll just throw them over there, like this. And there. Anyway, give it a try with your partner. Just the biggest, just the trick is the start. <coughs> um, get that grip there, and with your legs, just try to keep the right leg in front. Okay, and I'll come around and help you out. The Matsumoto turnover, you can YouTube it. There's no instructional on it, so get a partner. Hey okay, guys, we're going to do a French turnover. Um, it's good for kids, it won't work for judo, uh, for seniors. Uh, but it's good for kids uh, at a young age to be able to do it. So what I want to do, the hand closest to the bum, I want to punch through to the other side. I want to get my hand to the other side of his hips, not halfway, I'm going to get it all the way. Okay, so what I do is I push, punch my hand through, get the skirt and feed it nice and tight. And pull tight. That's so that when I go, I've got my whole arm to use him, to, to pull him across. This hand goes on this side of his head, and I turn my legs into Kezugatami legs, all right, like this. Now, keeping this tight, one leg in the middle, and this is the hard bit, because he's going to be resisting, is I just hop over, nice and slow. Like this, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, into Kezugatami, and it's very, very tight. Okay, so I do it again. It's going to be here. I have to get the skirt, because it's quite... I right, stay low, punch through. Pull tight, hand on this side and legs here, that in the centre. Most people, when I do it, I hop and I walk, but I always keep the left leg in front, okay? Most people, kids especially at the start, punch their hand through, get the skirt, is they do this. And it doesn't work, because they're not, always, always keep that left leg in front. So here, push, tighten up on the skirt, pull tight, hand on this side of the head. There. Always keep the left leg in front. Pull, pull, pull. Just stay there. I'll do one more from that side, John. So just stay there. Just stay there. And you stay here. Pull. Punch. Skirt. Legs here. Pulling. How's it coming? What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to attack, yeah, it, attack the turtle. Okay, okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is this hand, hooking with my thumb, false grip on top of his wrist. Okay, and I'm going to push him using my body and my hip so he goes on flat onto his face. So push, get him flat on his face. I'm still hooking. Keeping my body weight nice and low. I'm going to bring this knee to this side of his head. But I'm using my body weight low. As I do it, my elbow goes in his back. So, head, here. And my elbow's in his spine. Okay, and I have this bigger foregrip. Grab the skirt, tie it off. Just keep my weight low, grab the lapel. Sit back. Oz are coming. Okay, so one more time. He's up in a turtle. Okay, hook here. Push him under his face.
keep him low. Okay, knee on top of the head, and then I pull his head towards me. He'll hold his arm in tight, my elbow in his spine, wrap this up. Now I can either grab the choke here, hold it on me, or, oh, sorry, knee him in the back of the head on the way over, or, once I tie it up, bring my legs here, grab this, and I'll just come in here. Always controlling this. Okay, so five times each as a warm. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to do a basic guard pass. So my, my elbow is staying inside with his knee. With my right knee, I put it right in his uh, elbow. Sit my body back, his elbow is to break his leg. Okay, I turn my hips a little bit. With this hand, I'm keeping this on the inside of his knee. Alright, to keep his leg at bay. Because if I don't, he's going to sit up and triangle me. Okay? So when I break his leg, I have to keep this knee down. Because a good guy, he wants to start throwing up in the arm across. Push his knee down to give a bit of a spread, especially if you're inflexible. With this knee, comes up and to the floor. So with this back foot, I trap his leg here. That's to stop him um, hooking my leg and getting a heart start. Okay, so I trap and here. If you notice, if I'm trying to turn away, he's stuck. Turn it on his stomach. He's, he's stuck. I, I'm in a decent good position. Okay, from here, this foot stays. Okay, this hand goes either under his head, here, still stays, that's so he can't hook my leg, see, he can't hook my leg, that stays, now I block his hip, and he goes into a hole there, so one more time, Rest his legs up, knee up the middle, elbows in, head up, if he wants to pull me down, head up, break him. Push the knee down and get a nice spread here. Knee up to the floor, trap the back foot. It hurts him a little bit. This hand under the head, this bum cheek over here. Here. That's to stop him getting knee to elbow so he can pull guard. Okay, replace this. Thanks, John. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do an opposite knee guard part. Alright, it's one of my favourite guard passes because it's very fast uh, and effective. So pretty much a partner's going to need a knee block. I want to be able to break his guard so I've broken it. What I do is I'm keeping this, his, my elbow to find his leg, I come up with this knee. Okay, now from here, this knee should be right against his thigh. Keeping this control, I drop my knee across his body. As I drop it across, this arm slides underneath his armpit into the scar hole. Okay, so do it again. And that's a fast one. Pull. There. But what happens is, and this is what I do a lot of, is I break it. As I go to pass, he knows I'm going to pass. I stay nice and low. I come high, I low. I stay low. And as I pass, he tries to get an underhook because if he gets an underhook, he can maybe take my back or, or get a half cut or something like that. So as he gets an underhook, I let him have it. So this arm comes under his arm to the back of his head. Right? Now from here he can't get washed up, trying to wash up. He's stuck. It's a half Nelson. And now from here, I just scoot around this way and take his back. And it's a new thing that works often. Sometimes when you're here, and you do pass, he might not get it. And I'm, I'm here. But again, he's a good guy. He's not thinking guys that are straight away on the other hook. So you have to be able to counter the counter. Sometimes, if you're fighting a weaker guy, as you pass, he goes to the other hook. You might be able to sit the same you can't. You might be able to clamp his head, slide his arm through, put it on your elbow, and dash choke him from here. But what happens is when I get here, he gets good posture. I can't dash choke him because I can't get my... So then from here I just change to the back of his head. Scoot around in side control. Alright, so it's a knee through guard pass into a kesekatami, a uh, scarf hole. And if they're good enough to get the counter with the underhook, you, uh, you can get into the dash choke or a barbell choke.
Okay, so tonight we're going to do a, a, a god ha, as well as a rest of the god ha, because uh, it's, like a, it's like a double leaf tank dance, so the rest of the more than time, so that's why I call it that. Pretty much it will be in our own god. Hopefully I can open it, alright? Hopefully you can open this, because that's where I want to be. I never want to be in a closed god, it's a walk of the nature, right? Um, because if I'm in a closed god, it's going to take me a long time to get out of it, it's going to be really tough. So whenever I fight, I always try to stay outside of his god. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to chuck both arms under his leg, grab his hips. Then I'm going to pull him up as high as I can under his bottom shoulders here. Alright, I clasp my hands together. Alright, I stack him up. Because he'll be resisting his hips. Yeah, there. Stack him here. Depends which way I want to go. I slide one hand across his hips. And into side control. So I'll do it again. It's going to be here. I'm going to go quickly under, grab his hips, lift him up high as I can. But what he can defend is by doing back and roll as I throw him. So I'm up here, as I throw him, and he gets away, and he pulls a guard again. So when I lift him, I want to make up, I lift, and then I make sure I hold him back. So that he doesn't, I get away, because then he just back to the guard again. So as I lift, I make sure that I lift, and then keep him on this point, where he can't roll, I try to roll. So he's actually quite stuck. Now, here are the two options. I can slide, if I want to go around my right, I slide my right hand across to this hip. And pass. Or, if you've got a gate, especially if you can hard with a gate, lift this hand to his opposite shoulder. So that when I come around, I can bring my elbow into his neck. Into side control. Okay, so that's the rest of the dark part. And he's quite good. Cool. Sometimes when you find a good light, you might just throw them over their head. Because then you can take, hopefully take them back. So as I throw you roll, and I'll try to take it back, maybe end up in an animal or something like that, because we've got to be a good scramble. So here, here, up. He rolls here. Now I'm in this position. 